Hey guys! Today we will have a little bit different video. I want to talk about yoga mats because many people ask me about them. I have a blog, but sometimes it's nicer if you can watch a video about some stuff, especially if it is review. I started with yoga in 2013 and this is when I bought my first yoga mat. I have this weird thing where <laughs> when I start doing something, I have to buy all the equipment. My first yoga mat was this green uh, jade yoga mat. I bought it from their website. At that time it was already quite an investment. Nowadays this mat cost 77 euros. I think I bought it for 65 or something like that. And it was a good mat. I loved it. I kept it uh, unrolled on the floor, which was not the best. Uh, and it started to degrade a little bit. Nowadays it will crumble if I practice on it, so I don't do that anymore. But the advantage of this mat is that it's made from natural rubber, which means that you can basically throw it into a compost and it should disintegrate into I don't know what. <laughs> they say this mat is 5 millimeters thick, which is a normal thickness for a yoga mat. It should give you enough cushioning for your knees and so on. And also it has better grip the more you sweat. So I like that. I My palms are very dry normally, but if I practice they will start to sweat and I like to have grip with more sweat. You can see it has a nice structure, so it will really have a grip and the natural rubber has its own smell especially at the beginning it had a very distinct smell but i wasn't really bothered by that and it it disappeared and it's not so prominent it smells like rubber later i started to do a big research about the mats when i was trying to find another mat after jade and I bought a little lemon mat, a 3mm thick one, which has also rubber on the bottom and then a plastic layer on the top. And the similar to Lululemon is also the life form mat. So I have two, I have the normal and then the travel life form. The Lululemon mat was really good. It was a little bit more slippery than the life form but it was the same as jade yoga mat the more you sweat the more it's grippy and it was not that heavy it was nice it was a little bit more firm than the life form mats after the lululemon mat i actually had two one very thin one for traveling for carrying with me and then i had one that i just kept at the studio where i practiced I wanted something to have at home a very good mat with a very good grip and that's when I got the life form mat 5 millimeters thick this one is the heaviest mat I ever owned it is almost 3 kilograms which is 6.4 pounds it costs 135 euros so it's also one of the most expensive mats that I bought um, but I loved it. It was really, it's really the best mat if you sweat, if you really want to hold a down dog forever, your hands will not slip one single millimeter. However, after the experience with JD Yoga mat, when I learned that, okay, this mat will disintegrate <laughs> if you just leave it unrolled because the rubber is very sensitive and also the top layer of these mats it will just catch everything on it because of how much grippy it is so if you have oils on your hands which you have naturally it will slowly go inside the pores of the top layer of the mat and the mat will get more slippery the more you practice on it and also sun exposure is the worst enemy of this mat so never leave your mat on sun or don't go too much with it into parks or maybe if you go then just try to stay in shadow this is the best advice that i can give you to have 
this kind of mats to last for a little bit longer. I don't use this mat anymore. It lost its grip, but it really served me for at least two years, I think. Then I got this travel one from a guy. So I got it second hand. It was a little bit cheaper. It's still expensive. It's still over 100 euros and it's also still heavy. It's one kilogram lighter than the normal life form mat, which means it's two kilograms, which is quite some weight, which is 4.4 pounds. The next mat I got because I really wanted something ultra portable, but still grippy since I was obsessed with this kind of mat that has perfect grip. I got this Manduka, my first and only Manduka mat. Uh, it's the Echo version, super light. It's also one of the cheapest mat I have here. And it's half of the weight of the travel life form mat. So it's one kilogram and it's one of the lightest mats I have but it's also the thinnest, so you will have zero cushioning with this one. But it's great for hotels, you can put it on a carpet and then you have enough cushioning for your knees. You can pack it very, very efficiently. You don't have to only roll it, like I have it here. You can simply fold it into this tiny square and because it's light, it, yeah, it fits everywhere. So I even um, bring it into parks in my backpack this is, yeah, the most portable mat out there. And it's grippy, which I like. Manduka is a very known brand. They have also a different, more famous mat, uh, which they have a lifetime warranty for. They say it will last forever, which I know people that have these mats and they really last very, very long, but I don't like them. I used to practice or I still am practicing on them in a studio because some studios have them but they get more slippery the more you sweat where there is a solution for that problem you can buy and even Manduka cells I think this is from them this kind of microfiber towels you can have one for the whole length or you can have just a small square like this that you can put underneath your palms so you don't sweat on your palms which is also nice so if i go to a studio i like to have this small towel with me that i use underneath my hands when i need to and i don't have to carry a real mat the next mat or the next type of mats are something like a combination of these micro towels that you can use, but they are sticked to a mat with a rubber also on the bottom. So it's again half echo, half not really, because you still have plastic on top, except for the Jade Yoga mat that is full on made from rubber. And I really like how this mat feels. They are really amazing. This one is from Mala. My Melamed. This Melamed has a really nice design. So this is something that is amazing about this mat. You can print whatever design or pattern that you you want on the mat. However, this mat is super heavy also. So it's right after the life form. It has 2.4 kilograms or 5.3 pounds. Right after that is the Jade Yoga mat that is two kilograms. It's almost the same as the travel version of the life form. This one cost 90 euros on their website and it gets more slippery at the beginning because of how velvety it is. But the more you sweat, the more grip you will get. And if you want to grip right from the beginning, you can also sprinkle some water on the top and then you will have grip immediately. Similar but not the same from the Malamed is this sugar mat, which is funny name, but yeah, that's how they are called. I thought when I was getting this one, I was thinking that, okay, these looks, they look totally the same. They will probably feel the same. And I was so surprised when I got it because it's 
ultra light. It has only 1.7 kilograms, which is 3.8 pounds. It's the same price as the Melamed and you can pack this one or fold it much better. It's also made from rubber and you can see when I when I do this, you can bend it, so it doesn't have that kind of rigidity of the life form of the or the malamed. So if I compare it, this one, first of all, I can't really squish it. I can't squeeze it with my hands as much, and then I can't bend it at all, and it will stay pretty nicely when I just put it like this. But the sugar mat is really flexible. If you practice, for example, on a carpet, it might happen that the mat will stretch a little bit. But that said, maybe think about how you practice yoga. Maybe if your legs stretch your mat, you should change the way you are doing your warrior or your down dog. So maybe try to squeeze your legs together in order for the mat to not stretch the sides. Still, I really like this one. The surface is also much different from the Malamed. It has more grip. It starts to be grippy much sooner when I start to sweat, but also all the litter from the ground will get and stick to it because of that. So the fibers are a little bit different. I mean, you can see it probably on the video. And I really like this material. This mat, I thought, when I will get it, it will. I will just use it sometimes and I will still stick to the extra grippy life form for my, the rest of my practice, but it really started, really grew on to me and I really liked it. Although I already had the Malamed, I really liked and I prefer the comfort and the feel of the sugar mat. Least but not the last is this new cork mat from Maltes Craft. I was very curious about this mat. Many people like it because of how it looks, because the cork might feel very nice. It also smells interesting, like cork. Maybe a little bit of glue, because it's not probably a true cork. It's really beautiful and it has this natural kind of feel. It also gets more grippy the more you sweat. I didn't have problem with sliding, but I have to say that since the beginning of my yoga journey, <laughs> when I started to practice on these ultra grippy mats, I and I would be very picky about how grippy the mat is, these days I just don't care anymore. I try to use more my muscle to stay into the, in that shape and I don't care if my hands start slipping. If they start slipping then I'm start then I will start thinking like what should I do for the palms to not slip? Maybe I need to engage my muscles a little bit differently in order to have less slipperage. This mat is also ultra light. It's only one kilogram so this big huge ass cork mat with a plastic and rubber combination on the bottom that is more foamy and more light than the natural rubber on the most of the mats is the same weight as this tiny thinnest manduka light mat. It's only one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. The disadvantage is that you can't really Although it's very light, you can't really pack it with you if you are traveling somewhere. You have to and you should, they say, you should not roll it very tightly just because the cork might bend and break, I guess. So it will be pretty big. But if you don't mind the size, if you are just trying to grab it for a class in the town, this one is very nice. This mat also comes with a very thin strap, which is also not the best for transporting, but since it's so light, it's okay. And talking about straps, the Lifeform mats, although they are very expensive, they come with these bags that have Lifeform written all over them, and you will get confused in a yoga workshop because everyone will have this. So you have to sign yours. Also with the Lifeform mats, you have to sign yours because there will be 
at least one more person having the same yoga mat as you have. You have also a very nice kind of shoulder strap, shoulder pad for it because it is heavy so you need that kind of cushioning over your shoulder for this heavy mat and the uh, inside is not very special you can't really put anything else there maybe one towel and that's it but this is advantages of the lifer mat that although you pay bigger price you will get the bag with it this bag they say for the travel mat that it is compatible with some regulations in airplanes so it should fit within the how big your carry-on baggage can be but still if you are traveling with a low-cost airlines they will not allow you to have an additional bag with you so they might say no to this when i was traveling to thailand i did bring my big huge ass life form with me because i was going there for a teacher training and i really wanted very good mat there and uh, airlines were okay with it i did even checked it in i think as an additional baggage somehow for free yeah it was you can do it you can Tra travel with these mats too however if you don't want to have an additional bag f with a mat with you and you need to pack your mat with you into the small carry-on for example the best mats are this manduka but this one will not give you the cushioning if you're going for a workshop for doing more yoga and this is why this sugar mat became my favorite because first of all it's quite it's almost the same weight as the travel even less it has more cushioning it is four millimeters and not one and a half or two millimeters as the life form travel mat although it's maybe a little bit more squishy so it might have the same kind of cushioning effect but you can really fold this mat and it fits exactly into my carry-on luggage and it, it still feels like I have the normal mat with me so this is really the best if you tra travel for teacher trainings or for some special workshops where you really want to have the best mat with you the last option for you to have as a yoga mat but also as a beach towel for example if you're going somewhere where there is a beach are these kind of cotton carpet rugs this one is from lila yoga rugs they are really a nice couple and this is i would say the most kind of organic thing that you can have as a yoga mat it will also have a nice grip the more you sweat it doesn't have too much cushioning it's very thin and it's also not the lightest by the way although it is the same size if you roll it out as the big life form mat it will not provide you the same amount of cushioning and also it will not be the lightest thing in your luggage since it is 1.4 kilograms or 3 pounds so it's a little bit heavier it's between the super light eco manduka and my sugar mat this yoga rack is for costing 50 euros because it's made from i think scraps of cotton the next option for if you want to go a little bit low cost is this cork mat it costs only 50 euros also the same as this yoga rug and lotus crafts have a similar mat to life form that is quite affordable i think around 65 euros and i've heard only good things about it so maybe check that out in general if you compare the size of the mats you can see that the biggest is the life form and the cork mat they are almost the same size the travel mat is a little bit smaller from life form the rug is also the same size a little bit wider than the life form then you have 
the microfiber top mat and the melon mat is a little bit longer than the sugar mat. However, I didn't really mind that this sugar mat is not so long. I am not also very tall. I'm 163 centimeters. I'm not really bothered if my feet stick out of the mat and I think they don't stick out from any of these mats. If the mat is light and also it's almost like the full mat, the mat that you want to practice at home, that's the best option for me. To sum it up, I love all of these mats. There is no bad mat except if you are buying a really cheap mat from your grocery store or somewhere. I have one of those, by the way. So if you buy a good quality mat from a known brand, then you're not going to buy something that is going to be terrible for you. You will be able to practice on it. And maybe you will have to somehow adjust your practice, but maybe that's good for you. Maybe, you know, you need to change the way you are practicing. So sometimes even if something bothers you, it doesn't have to be necessarily wrong or bad for you. You can check the links for all these mats, by the way, in the description. So I will link all of the mats so you can see and you can click on them and see if they are available in your country. Thank you for watching, guys. And I hope to see you in the next one. I will actually not see you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> see you in the next video. Bye.